Steve Hoffman, affectionately known as Captain Hoff, is the CEO of Founderspace, a leading global startup accelerator headquartered in San Francisco. Steve is a digital media pioneer and one of the first people in my world who focused on bringing cutting edge innovation practices to China. Inspired by Steve, I traveled to Shanghai recently where I coach startup CEOs and talk game thinking to a packed room of hardworking, ambitious entrepreneurs. That trip ignited my fascination with the dynamic Chinese startup scene and led to our book, Game Thinking, being published in both modern and traditional Chinese. I'm grateful to Steve for opening doors for us in China and for opening my eyes to the exciting opportunities happening around the globe. Listen in as I talk with Steve about his adventures bringing Silicon Valley style innovation to Chinese entrepreneurs. So please introduce yourself, what you do to the folks here. What I do is I am the captain and co-founder of Founderspace, and we are an incubator and accelerator located, our headquarters are in San Francisco, but we work now in 22 countries around the world, helping startups innovate, and create products, raise money, go to market, everything. Wow. And where are you right now? I am now in Beijing. So I am here in Beijing for a couple reasons. One, we have set up offices in China, in Shanghai, and we are expanding to Beijing and other cities. And the second reason is I just wrote a book called Making Elephants Fly, The Process of Radical Innovation, which takes all the teaching uh, we have done for the past five years and all the learning and research and puts that into a book about how startups can innovate and it really focuses on case studies, startups that have succeeded and why they succeeded and startups that have failed and why they failed. What are the trends that you're following? You are clearly inspiring a lot of people, myself included. Uh, What's inspiring you? What's feeding you? What trends are you paying attention to? What are you seeing in your world? So I travel the world a lot now. So I'm traveling like 70% of my time, sort of the opposite of you, <laughs> who's doing everything in a smarter, more remote way, is I love traveling. So I love learning. And I love being exposed to other cultures and other peoples. So I'm seeing trends globally. Like I see, I'm going really deep now on how Chinese do business, how they approach business, the psychology of how they make deals and do deals and think of the world and think of uh, developing products and markets and all that stuff. So I'm absorbing that uh, now. And I am able to, because I'm getting all these getting immersed in all these different cultures and different ways of thinking. It is broadening how I think about the world, how I do business and how I can teach. So what many of the trends I'm seeing are innovation happening globally, but in different ways in different countries. So in say China, more, they're, say more. <laughs> yeah, in China, they're innovating in a different way. So China is ahead of the U.S. in certain categories. So in certain areas like technology, they still copy like crazy. But in areas like WeChat, which is their big social network, their big instant messenger, they have innovated far beyond. Facebook is actually looking and copying China because commerce on WeChat has gone to a whole new level. So in WeChat, their social network, you use it for everything. People like I don't need to carry cash in China. And all my friends in China no longer use cash. We just use our social network to buy everything. They have these QR codes, which aren't big in the US but they're huge in China. QR codes are used for commerce, they're used for marketing, they're used to just connect with people and form groups, everything. WeChat has built into it a whole ecosystem. So they have built into it kind of the, they've sucked the entire internet into WeChat. So you don't really go out to a web browser now. You browse everything through your social network. They actually have these micro apps in WeChat where you engage with the app, you don't even download an app on your phone. You have the apps within the instant messenger. So all of this is very, very telling on innovation. And I'll tell you, when I go back to Silicon Valley, in the respect of what they've done in social networks, I feel like we're behind. We actually- You are correct. China is ahead of us. What you just described is ahead of us. But that's been true for a while. When I was working on avatar worlds in like 
2002, I looked at Japan for leadership and career. Yes. Yes. And I saw it and we were sort we were being inspired by that. So what are some of the most common mistakes that you see product teams and product leaders and entrepreneurs making in the earliest stages when they're bringing their idea to life? The biggest mistake I see entrepreneurs make is that they fall in love. So <laughs> they fall in love, but not with another person, <laughs> unfortunately. That would be more fun. They fall in love with their product. And when you're in love, I always say love is blind. So <laughs> you, you know, when you're infatuated, you tend not to see it for what it really is. And when people give you feedback saying, oh, you know, that person isn't right for you if you're infatuated with them, you don't listen. <laughs> so when you're in love with your product and you get feedback, you're like, no, 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 you know, it, you, you don't understand. You, this is really good. You just don't get it. So filters automatically go up that block out them from taking a deeper look at their product and going deep with the people who are giving them the feedback because they really don't want to hear it. So the advice I give startup founders to try to prevent this is don't fall in love <laughs> with your product. What, who you need to love are your customers. So you need to love them and they need to love your product. So your job is to love them enough to really listen to them like you do in a good relationship and discover their psychology, what's in their head, what they're really thinking and get them to the point where they are just crazy infatuated with your product. Because if they're infatuated with your product, then you win. If you're infatuated with your product, you don't win. I mean, that only helps you, actually it only hurts you to be infatuated with your product. That's such a great point. We call that fall in love with the problem, not the product. And yes. oh, that's such a, it's probably a hard one. I mean, you and I have both probably earlier in our careers been in that position, right? Oh, I have made that mistake. <laughs> I have loved many, too many. Pro I thought, you know, coming from a kind of artistic background, that you were supposed to fall in love with your product. Like you were like you're supposed to be passionately in love. And you know, the, the myth of the artist, the myth of the artist is that you don't listen to the world. You do what your heart says, right? You, you, you know, the world is wrong and you are right. And you are going to prove to the world that you have the vision and the insight and the passion to create something that nobody has ever seen. Vincent van Gogh <laughs> all over again. Um, but reality uh, is seldom that way. Reality is usually is you can be passionately in love with your product and go off in your own direction, but then you got to get extremely lucky, you know, that the world is also in love with whatever weird creation you're doing. If you were going to give one piece of advice to an innovator or entrepreneur who really wants to build a compelling product that people, that's not a leaky bucket, that people will use, but feels unsure of what the best approach is, what would you tell that person to do? So I always say, well, don't listen to your heart. <laughs> Do not listen to your heart. Listen to the, the, the data and gather the data early. Like push data gathering as far forward as you possibly can. Build as little as possible as you possibly can because the more you build, you fall in love with it, what you build. It's the Ikea effect, right? When you build your own furniture, Ikea is brilliant. You fall in love with that furniture. You know, they knew it. You don't return it as, as, because you built it. So when you build your product, the less you build, the better off you are. Figuring out ways uh, to gather data early in the process with doing as little work as possible is really the challenging part. How do you do these experiments? How can you get meaningful data without even a prototype? You know, is there a way to go to customers and simulate your business early on with uh, very, you know, videos, PowerPoints, acting it out, you know, doing, when we do game prototyping, we do paper prototypes because they're a paper prototype you're not as invested in and you can get it up and running faster. All these things are so important in the process. And I know you have a whole methodology on this. And is, exactly that. That's exactly what we speed up and give you guidance in. That's what people need. Same, they need you. They need you. <laughs> and need that's you. why you and I are buddies. And, yes. Uh, 
And I, everything you just said made my heart sing because I'm glad you're saying it. I'm glad your message is out there. I'm glad you're spreading it in China where so many amazing entrepreneurs are and so many yes. great products and services and apps and all kinds of stuff is coming out of. So And they need to innovate here. So they have shortcut this process by copying from Silicon Valley, right? So when you copy something that works, you don't have to go through this painful, messy process. But now they have to innovate. They're being forced to because there's so many entrepreneurs. You can't really copy and succeed and be guaranteed of any sort of success. So this sort of teaching is particularly relevant in China as well as around the world right now. Fantastic. Steve, thank you so much for sharing your time and your great stories and your thank wisdom you. with us. Thank you. Hey, innovator. Wondering what innovation advice you should follow? It turns out that one size does not fit all. Take our innovators quiz and get your free customized cheat sheet packed with smart innovation tips that are tailored to you. Go to gamethinking.io slash quiz to get started.